Welcome to Tech Savvy Productions. We're going to be looking at the subject of a Tor switch. You can't seriously read a lot about data center design, software-defined networking, co-location units, or even internet exchange facilities without hearing the term Tor switch pop up all the time. Now there's a very accurate definition of what a Tor switch is, and then there's a whole lot of nuances to that definition. Let's take a look at what a Tor switch and why it plays such an important role in specific types of data centers. All right, remember I said technical definition first. If I say I have TOR switch, that means it's top of rack. If I've got a 19 inch rack, whatever component I put on the very top would be a TOR device, a TOR component. In the case of our discussion, we're gonna be talking about TOR switches. So that means we're gonna take a switch, put it at the top of the rack. The rest of the rack will be servers, storage, devices and we'll tie all the networking to the switch at the top of the rack. So when we're using the word Tor, we're talking accurately and technically about the physical location. Whenever it's at the top of the rack, it's a Tor device. Now critical network switches that connect all the servers and storage in a rack, if we place that switch at the top, that's called a Tor switch. Now some data centers take racks of servers, racks of storage, and then at the end of the row, they will put all the switches at the end of the row. Those are called EOR switches, end of row switches. Cabling has to be longer because you've got to run your cabling down to the end of the row to where all your switches are. And there are advantages to having end of row switches versus TOR switches. Another option is middle of the row, MOR where instead of putting all the switches at the end of the row of where all the racks of servers and storage devices are racked up, we're gonna move those switches to the middle, reducing the distance by half. Servers on this side, servers and storage on this side, and they simply come to the middle of that row and they connect to the switches. That's called MOR switches. So let's go back to my picture of my rack of servers and my switch at the top top of the rack switch. But what if that network engineer is racking up his servers, racking up his switches, and he decides, you know, it just makes sense to put that switch in the middle of the rack or maybe even at the bottom of the rack but I'm connecting all the devices in this rack to that switch, no matter whether it's at the top or the middle, at the bottom. Nine times out of 10, no matter where he puts it in the rack, he's still gonna call it a TOR switch. I told you this was tricky. So a TOR switch is more than just its location. Now, when describing network traffic within data centers, there's two ways of talking about it. And I'm going to loosely call traffic going from in the data center out to the internet and from the internet into the data center, north-south traffic. For the purposes of this presentation, there may be people who would argue that there are other kinds of traffic that could be classified as north-south, but for the purpose of this presentation, bear with me, internet to data center, data center to internet, north-south. Now, there's another type of traffic in data centers is within the data centers, and that can also be within, let's say, Azure. Microsoft has many Azure data centers, and if the traffic goes from one Azure data center to another that is called east-west. Any traffic within the data center is called east-west. Now here's the key takeaway. If the most critical aspect of your data center is north-south traffic, you're going to design your data center very differently. If the most critical aspect of your data center is east-west traffic, you're typically going to use an architecture called spine leaf topology. It's in spine leaf topology, that east-west traffic, that the Tor switch shines. So when our data center is designed with the spine leaf network topology or architecture, we typically see top of the rack switch. Copper can be used because we can use twisted pair. We have short distances to the switch from the server. In the rack, we get the lowest cost per rack. It's easy to upgrade that switch. Pull a low bandwidth switch out, put a higher bandwidth switch in, and voila, we're ready to go. Now the switch that you're looking at is a Tor 
four switch. This is an amazing beast of a switch. It's designed and manufactured by Apps Network. I want you to look carefully at a Tor switch. It has 48 ports of 25 gigs each, and then it only has eight ports of 100 gigabit ethernet out. This runs very easily on software defined networking. Most of the traffic is going to be east west, right inside this switch. Now, here's a Dell Tor switch. You can see I've got a lot of ports that allows me to connect all my servers, storage units up to this single switch. I've got a number of uplink ports. These uplink ports will connect me to my spine switch. My spine switch is just a high capacity switch that will connect all the Tor switches to the data center network. Now, if you're a data center that is strictly fiber optic cable infrastructure, then you can use the EOR switch design where you take all your switches and put them at the end of the row. Fiber optics can go a long way. It's generally not used if twisted pair copper is involved in the data center. It's easy to upgrade the switches like Tor. More expensive costs per rack though when you do a end of row. You can also do middle of row. You put all your switches in a rack, put it in the middle of the rows of, of servers and storage units, and then bring your cabling to the center or the middle of the row where you connect all that to your switches. This is about medium cost per rack. It's easy to upgrade the switches. Now, if you're trying to use copper cabling in your middle of row structure, sometimes there are exceptions when it's the row is simply too long and you get back to the long distance that the cable has to run. That's where copper cabling begins to have a problem. So what are the benefits of Tor? If you're using copper cabling, all the copper cabling stays within the rack. The reduction of cable cost per rack comes by shorter cable runs. CAT7 can be used because you've got shorter cable runs. CAT8 can be used. Modular and flexible per rack architecture can be done. Future proofing for higher speeds. You can pull out one switch, put in a better switch. So those are some of the benefits of Tor. Because so many data centers do their network architecture based on the spine leaf network topology or design, often when you look at literature, white papers, etc., they will use the word Tor and leaf synonymously. In other words, they mean the same thing. Almost always when we have a spine leaf architecture in the data center, the Tor switch can also be called the leaf switch. Many data center designs use the spine leaf network topology. It gets great results when the data center hosts lots of cloud-based applications, especially containers. Containers can be spread across many servers, and you could have a lot of containers on a single server. Say so you have an online website, and the various containers contain microservices that make up card authentication, inventory of the store, website that shows all the contents for that online store, and then you have card processing, you have the cart generation, and all of that is microservices spread across containers on three or four servers, all plugged into the same switch. That traffic is east-west, so you also get great results with virtualized networking. If you're using Hyper-V, VMware, Linux KVM, and Citrix, they work great with the spine leaf network topology. These type data centers really want lower costs per rack, and a Tor switch placement really provides that lower cost. Here's an example of my leaf switch and my spine switch. Notice my leaf is synonymous with Tor, top of rack. You can use more affordable switches because you're plugging 1 gig, 10 gig, 25 gig ports down to server storage. And then you uplink using 40, 100, maybe as high as 400 gigabits up to a spine switch, which is a more expensive and higher capacity switch. And that's going to connect you across the data network. One of the beauties of spine spine leaf topology is if you use really massive spine switches, your data center can scale very large. Look at this diagram. Let's start over on the left hand side, a two way spline. And we're talking about pretty beefy spline spine switches with pretty high capacity with top of rack switches can support up to six 10 gigabit interfaces. Now let's move to the center. We've got a four-way spine sitting on top or connecting to our top of rack switches. Now it all depends on the bandwidth and capacity of those spine switches. But here a four-way spine could give you potentially 12,000 10 gig interfaces. And then at, on the right we see 16-way spine up to 100,000 10 gig interfaces. So you can see the spine leaf topology provides a very scalable pathway. 
This brings us to another term, hyperscale computing. Companies like Scaleway, Switch, Alibaba, IBM, QTS, Digital Realty Trust, Equinix, Oracle, Facebook, Amazon Web Services, SAP, Microsoft, and Google have this tremendous ability to scale their computing and their network. That's what Spine Leaf topology is all about. So Spine Leaf or Spine Tor data center architecture design provides lower cost design for the data center, gives increased incredible east-west traffic, really good for cloud applications, hyperscaling capability, really desirable for many data center designs. Another important part of this design is latency because each Tor switch is only one hop away from another one. That east-west traffic has low latency from one top of the rack switch to another if necessary. Now a couple interesting facts about spine leaf topology data center design. One, it removes the need for spanning tree protocol. Instead, they use what's called equal cost multipath routing. They also increase use of fixed port switches and the network backbone. More cabling to purchase and manage, giving the higher interconnection count. It's a more scale out versus scale up infrastructure, and it doesn't require re-architecting the network. There's really no downtime to scale out. If you're thinking this architecture is just for cloud application data centers, no. It works great for TV production studios and movie production studios. So the applications for Spine Leaf are both TV production, movie production, cloud-based applications are very popular applications for this design. So I know what you're thinking. What about Netflix? What about Hulu? What about Amazon Prime streaming video services? Services. Well, they don't use Spine Leaf because it's east west. If you think about streaming services, it's all north south. So, this is a typical Cisco design for a streaming video service data center. Keep in mind, using copper cable or twisted pair in a rack lowers that cost but still provides that high bandwidth. When you use a Tor or a more designed data center, you still can use CAT 6A, CAT 6, CAT 7, CAT 8. Remember, CAT 8 is growing in its use in a data center. It provides 30 meters at 25 or 40 gig base T networking and allows up to two connectors between one end and the other. So here's a couple disadvantages of the Tor design. Remember the traffic needs to be east-west and if you get too much north-south traffic you can saturate those uplink which means traffic is going to be dumped and dropped which will require retransmission and recomputation which adds latency. Another problem is top of the rack switches especially if you use brands like Cisco, HP, Lenovo, and they're not software-defined networking switches, then it becomes more complex to manage them. Who in the world is designing Tor switches and spine switches? You would be surprised. It's not a lot of the big names you would think of, although they do provide those kinds of switches. The Open Compute Project was led by Facebook, who found itself building data centers, and the vendors it were using were not really providing what it need. So it pushed a lot of people to come together to the Open Compute Project. This was designed to provide open source and open collaboration to hardware and try to build the pace of innovation to lower cost, yet provide the kind of hardware, software, all the needs of a data center without the proprietariness. Open Compute Project is impacting server design, storage design, optical transceivers, switch, tors, spine, you name it, rack designs, router designs, and cabling and fiber infrastructure. Open Compute Project is impacting just about every data center on the planet. So in summary, technically Tor is simply top of rack. Tor switches are also known as leaf switches. They lower the cost per rack. Popular with data centers with a spline leaf topology. Its placement in a rack of servers could be in the middle, the bottom, or the top, but it's still called a Tor switch. It does not use spanning tree protocol. Cloud applications, virtualization, television studios, movie studios tend to use spine leaf Tor network topology. Free notes and PowerPoints in the video description below.